And so I really get a huge kick out of like that Harvard MBA student with that look in their eye, which is like, shit, I just spent all this time and money and it's meaningless because the people in power hate me. You know, the new people of power, right? Because the old people of power were like, oh my God, you went to Harvard, this is great. And the new people of power were like, you're a untrustworthy scumbag. Uh, I don't want to work with you. People ask me like, like there's a reason to change things. Some people do it because they are altruistic and philanthropically minded. I'm not that person. What I really like is to see people who've lived by a very codified set of rules find themselves in this really dark place internally because their entire worldview has been just torn apart. And like that sense of fear, just I think it's awesome. And particularly around people who've lived in a role of power and a position of power and that has imposed that sense of power and will on other people for decades or generations because of their station in life or their gender or where they went to school and all this hierarchical bullshit is up for grabs. <laughs> and I think that kind of changing of the power dynamic to me is um, really interesting. And I think it portrays the, probably the most meaningful sociological and societal change we're seeing in like probably, you know, since the abolishment of slavery and since like, you know, the women's right to vote. I really think it's that fundamentally important right now what's happening because you're just rewiring uh, what I call social capital. Right. right. So let's talk about influence versus education. Right. Um, well, I mean, just to, you know, just to give you a simple example, like let's take actually a, a, a broader macro view and then kind of go in for a second. But like, you know, like uh, we were told to live by a very strict set of all of us. Like we were probably of like the last generation of folks that were told to, you know, go to university and, you know, study really hard and get a really get a good degree from the best school we could get into and then maybe get a second degree. And then, you know, then you work and you buy a house and you buy a car and you get married and you have kids and, you know, you save in your 401k and blah, blah, blah. And now you have an entire generation of people who it's not that they don't value that. It's that, that they've realized that social capital comes from a completely different set of things that aren't defined by those things. And I think that's, uh, you know, when we look at that and we look at that kind of confused and we don't really quite understand it, but in many ways they've kind of like have the courage now to unshackle themselves from a very traditional sense of living their life and are moving to a new way of living their life. And, and they get social capital for their new way of life through p places like Facebook <laughs> and Twitter and all of these other things. And so you're rewiring our historical definitions of value. So in an educational sense, like it's like, you know, I went to a very good school in Canada, but even to this day, like my dad doesn't understand what I do, doesn't really care about my success, cares that I don't have a PhD or wasn't a doctor. Mm, interesting. Yeah. And he, because he just cannot understand that, that why would anyone value someone with just a bachelor's degree? Whereas I'm trying to tell you, it has nothing to do with the fact that you have the degree or not. It's that you can be a part of these movements and, and create change in interesting ways and rally people around certain things. And, and it's just foreign, that concept to him. And, you know, he's 72 years old and, you know, God bless him and I love him and all that stuff. But he's very emblematic of how many, many people have lived their lives and how they just don't understand what's happening. And so, you know, in an educational sense, it's like I tell people, like, you can spend all your time, like, going to school and getting a degree or you can just go to Treehouse, learn to code and, you know, get a job. And you may be the person that creates the next great website that drives all this interesting change in the world. And people will then anoint you as a leader of people. Mm -hmm. And it'll be completely independent of all these other historical definitions of what define leadership potential. And I think that's really awesome. Is it a, is it a reordering or is it a democratization? It, what's what's? I think what's they're happening? both the same word is roughly the same thing. I mean, I oh, mean the so? democratization is like our, our, our little kind of like that we use in our little bubble of Silicon Valley. The reality is it's a reordering. It's people saying that this used to be valuable and now this is valuable. How we used to say this person important no longer matters and now this new definition of importance matters. If you have 50,000 followers on Twitter, you're more important than a person that got you know a dual PhD from Johns Hopkins and Cornell. That, I think that that's really good because that person otherwise would have stumbled and bumbled forward and now that person is like you know running the Fed. <laughs> and now, you know, who knows how that changes in 20 to 30 years from now, how we'll think about the people that drive policy forward, that drive businesses forward, aren't going to be these people, I suspect, because it's going to be a much more bottoms up groundswell mm. that are led by all these random people that hierarchically the people in power will be just like, why the fuck are, do we have to listen to these people? Yeah, yeah. No, I was thinking more like in, if, if capital is an amount, right? 
and now you have all these people, more access. Like instead of having to go through Harvard to get to that, you can now come from <coughs> anywhere, right? Like yeah. at code school, whatever. Yeah. Um, but are, will there be more people tapping into that, or will it still be concentrated? No, it'll be more, it'll be many, many, many more people. Okay. Yeah. And and I think w and what that'll show is just that there were always many people who had the potential, but we had artificial barriers that just prevented those people from getting to the top. Like you're going to find some really amazing 16-year-old girl in Bangladesh who can just crush. And whereas before she lived in a world where she's married off and she has kids and she's told to shut up, mm -hmm. now doesn't have to. That's really fucking awesome. And what that displays is, is some blue blood waspy asshole from Yale. That's awesome. <laughs>